you don't have to love money as in idolize it to have a loving relationship with it as in treat it with respect. Hello, 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 and welcome to More Than Money, a podcast where we have nuanced conversations about money, business, and life, where we take the time to explore the human side of money because success with money is never just about the numbers. I'm your host, Jacquette Timmons, and I'm really, really glad you are here with me today. Before we dive into today's episode, I want to have you have in the back of your mind a few questions. So for example, how would you describe how you relate to money? Is how you relate to money getting in the way of what you earn? Is it getting in the way of your revenue and sales process? Is it getting in the way of the prices you charge? And if you are listening or watching as someone who doesn't own a business, is it getting in the way of how you negotiate your compensation package? Again, keep these questions in mind as you listen or watch today's episode. And speaking of, let's dive in. I've been told I have several jacquette-isms when it comes to money. Here's one of them. Your relationship with money is one of the longest relationships you'll have. People are often caught off guard when they hear me say it, either because they don't really view themselves as having a relationship with money because that's too woo-woo and not practical, or because they hadn't really considered the longevity of the thing they use almost every day, be it in the form of cash, credit card, or digitally. But once you see it, it's hard to unsee it. And it's easier to see parallels between your relationship with money and the other relationships you have that are longstanding, significant, or both. It's easier to see how and why your relationship with money is multi-layered, nuanced, complex, and emotional, especially when you consider the ways in which money touches almost every aspect of your life and business, influences the decisions you make or don't because of what you have or don't have, and how the ways in which money connects with you triggers a variety of feelings. Here's the deal from my perspective, whether it's someone, something, or money, when you are in relationship with it, there's a connection of some sort. So let's talk about the types of relationships for a moment, because if you Google types of relationships, you'll get a plethora of results that range in quantity and description. For the point I'm aiming to make, I want you to think about the relationships that matter to you characterized in this way. Let's start first with family. Who are the family members that energize you and how do they do so? Who are the members that don't energize you and why might that be the case? However you define healthy, which family relationships would you describe as healthy and why? And do the same for those you describe as unhealthy. Moving to a different category of relationships, others, be it friends, colleagues, clients, pets, or complete strangers, how would you characterize those relationships in that category that you enjoy and learn from versus those you simply tolerate? What makes any of these interactions transformational or transactional? Here's another group, objects. What are the material things in your life which are purely functional? To which do you have an emotional attachment? Which are a hybrid? And maybe you don't believe in God, spirit, or the universe, or perhaps you believe in things happening unexpectedly or by accident, aka serendipity. How would you describe a presence, though, that is bigger than you and your relationship with this presence? And then finally, self. How would you describe your relationship with yourself? Are you your best friend? How often do you bet on you? As you consider what comes to mind for you within each category, which connections are expressed as love? And what ways does money impact the quality 
of these relationships. I'm asking this for a reason. Depending on your faith, you may have heard some version of the scripture, for the love of money is a root of all evil. And there are different, you know, translations of it. Uh, but the, the, the particular scripture is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. Now, I am not a biblical or religious scholar, so I don't feel equipped to debate this from a religious standpoint. Besides, that isn't the point of today's episode. However, from a secular perspective, I find the words challenging. And I find them challenging because some people weaponize this scripture or other expressions like it, and they use it to shame people for their behavior with and feelings about money, and sometimes for nefarious reasons. I have a problem with it because it makes money the problem when it isn't. And in making money the problem, it diminishes the good that money can actually do for people and communities. And it also overlooks the role of connection and love and having a relationship with money, much like connection and love is an integral part of having a healthy relationship with other people, objects, <laughs> divinity, if you will, and with yourself. Now, I do indeed get the message of not idolizing money, and I agree. I do believe, though, it is hard to have a healthy relationship with it if you consciously or subconsciously believe money is a root of all evil, or that people with it are bad, or that what you have takes away from someone else's coffers. And in those instances when it that does happen, because I don't want to, you know, be oblivious here, um, it, that's usually a byproduct, though, of financial greed, of hoarding, and entitlement. So that's a different issue. One of the many points that I am looking to make in today's episode is this: Yes, money is complicated, and my reaction to that is, and, <laughs> and I have that reaction somewhat tongue in cheek, because what meaningful relationship in your life or business isn't a bit complicated? From my perspective, I don't believe you get to choose whether you are in a relationship with money. You just are. And through no effort of your own, there will be times when it will be a relationship of ease and when it will not. That said, I do believe you get to choose what type of relationship you have with money. You get to imagine all the ways you want money to play a role in your life and business. How can it help make your financial reality easier? How can it prepare you for the future you dream of? You also get to choose what habits to practice so that you can take part and do your part in creating or sustaining and growing your financial success. And finally, you get to choose what systems will help you navigate your setbacks and celebrate your successes. So yes, your relationship with money is complicated for a variety of personal, cultural, and systemic reasons. Yet from my experience and observation, this isn't any different than any other longstanding and significant relationship that you have. There is a degree of complexity with all of them. I just call this life being in life. So I am recording this almost a week after the jobs report came out on Friday, February 3rd, 2023. The numbers provided, and I'm sorry, the numbers I should say provided encouraging news about the labor market in the midst of ongoing concerns about inflation and layoffs at major tech companies and media companies. And there's a wondering if this is going to spill over into other industries. And let's not forget the anxiety over how the debt ceiling issue will be resolved. And during times like now, of heightened financial uncertainty on a macro level, i.e. the government, and or on a micro level, i.e. more personally, you might pay more attention to your money, to what you have, to what you need, to what you want, to what you might lose. And depending upon your circumstances, your reaction to what's unfolding right now may be to retreat, to minimize spending or investing. 
Or perhaps you're using this as an opportunity to actually strategically spend or invest. This episode is not, not about that either. You get to choose which response is best for you. But I am in your ear and on your screen if you are watching on YouTube to offer this suggestion. You don't have to love money as an idolize it to have a loving relationship with it as in treat it with respect. When you respect your money, you treat it as you would any relationship of meaning to you, not like one that feels threatening. You proactively engage with it and you give it direction and you recognize it as a tool that you can use for good for you, your family, your business, and your community at large. The title of today's episode is Money, What's Love Got to Do With It? And my answer may not surprise you because my answer is everything. It makes the difference between having a transactional relationship with money versus a transformational one. And you get to choose that too. Well, that's it for today, folks. As always, thank you for listening all the way until the end or watching if you are on YouTube. And before you hop, if today's episode sparked an aha or reflection, I'd love to hear more. Please send me a DM on Instagram or if you're watching on YouTube, place a comment below. And if you'd like to explore working with me and my private business and finance coaching practice, send me a DM on Instagram. In a nutshell, I help entrepreneurs and small business owners grow businesses that center the health of their personal finances. So once more, thank you for listening today. If you'd like to show appreciation for this podcast or perhaps this particular episode, please share it so we can reach more people. If you happen to be listening on Apple Podcasts, please take a moment to leave a rating and review. We do read them. And if you are on YouTube, please comment below. And finally, if you'd like to buy me a coffee, here's how you can do that. Go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash jacquette buymeacoffee.com forward slash Jaquette. I'll be back next week. I hope you will too. Until then, remember, it's about more than money.